1929, the Belgian surrealist artist René Magritte completed the treachery of images. The famous painting showed a pipe, and under it, this paradoxical inscription. When it was pointed out to Magritte that what he had created was in fact a pipe, he replied, Okay, you should try filling it with tobacco then. So this is not a pipe, but a painting of a pipe. A thin layer of pigments suspended in oil over a piece of canvas. Well, this is not Magritte's original, so it's really a poster of a painting of a pipe. Just a grid of multi-sized ink dots of black and primary colors. Of course, on your screen, this is not a poster, but a combination of red, green, and blue light frequencies. And as this animation was created digitally, what you've been watching all along is merely a collection of flickering multicolored pixels. But regardless of the technique used to represent the pipe, or anything else for that matter, Magritte's warning remains unchanged. Beware of the seductive and deceptive power of images. The earliest known man-made representations date back to over 30,000 years ago. Some archaeologists believe that the cave paintings depict visions experienced by Cro-Magnon shamans during ritualistic trance dances. Others believe that the spear marks found on some cave walls point to hunting rituals. What is certain is that since then, the belief that images hold supernatural powers has been embraced by cultures around the world. Simplified drawings evolved into the first pictographic languages, with each word being represented by a unique symbol. But these systems became impractical as multilingual markets emerged. As the Phoenicians sailed from ancient Lebanon to trade across the Mediterranean, the need for a better notation system gave birth to the first alphabet in history. By transforming images into 22 phonetic place markers, a society of merchants who left no significant works of literature invented the tool that all future literature would depend on. Glorious epics and religious manuscripts would follow, and with them, countless depictions of gods, rulers, warriors, and sages. For thousands of years, different societies developed unique visual systems to honor and worship their deities. But as varied as these systems were, they all featured a flat, two-dimensional aesthetic. An Islamic ban on figurative art, the adoption of Hindu numerals, and a passion for mathematics drove Muslim artists to develop some of the most intricate geometric patterns. And while these artists were not allowed to reference real objects in their work, the Arab Caliphate's introduction of advanced mathematics into Europe greatly influenced figurative art and led to the development of a major breakthrough in representation. In 1413, the Florentine architect Filippo Brunelleschi demonstrated the geometrical method of linear perspective and, for the first time in history, painters were able to accurately represent three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface. The depth and realism achieved with this technique were so mesmerizing, it quickly gained the patronage of the Roman Catholic Church. By seamlessly blending the real world with that of religious mythology, the evangelical powers of perspective would spread all over Europe. Its embrace was so enthusiastic that the church failed to realize the threat it posed to the religious establishment. Influenced by medieval thinkers such as Maimonides and St. Thomas Aquinas, Catholic doctrine became heavily reliant on Aristotelian logic, so it rejected the numeral zero and the concept of infinity, while praising the law of identity and the geocentric universe. If we analyze a perspective painting, we realize that everything tends to converge towards a vanishing point. The closer we get to this point, the more of the universe we can see. By this logic, when we reach an impossibly small non-dimensional point, a universe would be contained within it. Zero and infinity, two of Aristotle's most challenging rivals were concealed in every fresco. The venerable law of identity collapsed as nothing and everything became one and the same. Moreover, perspective provided geometrical confirmation that a spatial infinity existed in every direction. And, by definition, 
an infinite space could have no discernible center. The evidence against geocentrism, which declared the Earth as the center of the universe and the Church its one true faith, was now on display in every chapel. The medium had become the message. Still, perspective paintings proliferated. After all, the few scholars who could decipher the riddle worked for the Vatican, and any dissenter could be silenced. Dominican friar Giordano Bruno supported the notion of an infinite universe and was burned at the stake. But religious congregations were mostly illiterate and could not recognize the implications embedded in these paintings. In fact, widespread illiteracy was one of the reasons to proselytize through images in the first place. However, the prohibitive cost of literacy soon decreased thanks to a tremendous leap in broadcasting technology. In 1450, Gutenberg developed the printing press and five years later released the first mass-produced books. For ordinary people, this meant unprecedented access to an affordable source of education. For the church, it represented a challenge. By 1530, when Henry VIII declared himself head of the English clergy, the press had already spread all over Europe and was instrumental in disseminating the ideas of the Protestant Reformation. When the English king undermined the power of the Pope, the Vatican struck back with stiffer censorship and a return to strict orthodoxy. Such was the environment when Pope Urban VIII ordered Galileo to stand trial for heresy. After receiving a tour of the Inquisition's torture chambers, Galileo publicly rejected heliocentrism. Being an influential public figure and former private tutor of the Medicis, his life was spared. But his books were banned, and he was forced to spend the rest of his life under house arrest. And books were not the only medium being censored. In 1599, the brilliant artist Michelangelo Caravaggio was commissioned to decorate the walls of the Contarelli Chapel. In his daring depiction of St. Matthew, Caravaggio presented a humble and illiterate tax collector, sitting in a clumsy cross-legged posture with rough bare feet and a puzzled expression. A forbidden interaction between the earthly and heavenly domains takes place as the angel gently guides his hand to write the gospel. This intrepid masterwork was met with strong rejection and had to be completely recreated. Like the original, the second version was aesthetically superb, but was now in compliance with the church's agenda. In 1622, Pope Gregory XV established a counter-reformation and evangelical organization to spread the faith across the Asian, African, and American colonies. Due to the diverse languages of the many regions, images became critical in its missionary efforts. The sacred congregation for the propagation of the faith is the origin of the word propaganda. But the term's widespread use arose from the events of World War I. 